all right so what's up everybody it's uh what monday night right yeah it's monday night and i just want to talk about um the freemasons and their grasp on the military all right well at least the army can't speak on other branches but i was in the army for four years so i know about the army all right um i had a i had a user on here ask me for proof about what I was saying about the about uh, the Freemason influence in the army, and I really don't have the proof because when I, I got out as a corporal, which is the E4, there's two there's two separate ranks when it comes to E4 in the army, a specialist and a corporal. And a corporal, you're basically a sergeant, but they pay you as a specialist to do a sergeant's job. Okay, they they wanted they wanted to promote me to sergeant. I wasn't having it. I didn't go to no promotion boards or nothing like that because I didn't want to I didn't want to be in charge of soldiers all right but um yeah you know I I got out as the E4 and um but what I know there's two sides of the army there's the enlisted side and the officer side all right and I was deployed with a staff sergeant which is an E6 and I noticed him uh, studying some Freemason shit, right? When we were in Afghanistan during some downtime, he was reading a book with the with the logo on the cover and shit, the Freemason logo, right? And uh, so I said, I didn't really ask him about Freemasonry. At that time, I didn't really, my that's not really where my head was at. But I asked him, I said, well, what's up with that shit right there? What are you what are you studying? You know what I mean? And he said, uh, he's trying to become a Freemason because. He said, you'll learn about it as your army career progresses, but um, basically, you know, he said that uh, he didn't call it a secret society. He called it a fraternity, all right? And he said, Freemasons are basically a fraternity, and in order to get your E8, which is a master sergeant or a first sergeant in the army, you got to be part of the Freemasons. And... Um, in the military, we have a thing. It's it's almost like your resume from the military. It's called an ERB, which is a um, enlisted rec enlisted record brief. All right, and there's also a DD-214 when you get out. That's your discharge paperwork. Both of those have an M on them if you're a Mason, if you're a Freemason. I've seen a couple ERBs um, that had those on there. All right, and I had, I mean, long story short, you know, there, there, there's a part of the army called S1, all right, and I, I was like fucking around with this chick that worked for S1, which is like a paper pusher job in the army, and I was kicking it with her one day, and I just happened to glance at a couple ERBs. I wanted to see what some of these uh, first sergeants and and uh, the sergeant major in my unit, you know, what kind of uh, credentials they had and shit. I was looking at their awards on there and stuff, and uh. I asked her what that shit was. I noticed the M on there, and that's what she told me. She said, "Oh, that means they're Masons." I don't really know what it is, but it's something that it's some kind of club that that that, that uh, E8s and above are in, all right? And it makes perfect sense because um, on the enlisted side, E8 and E9 are the key leadership roles, all right? Like, I mean. You know, they, they 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 try to tell you in the army like, oh, um, NCOs are the backbone of the army, and all those E5 and E6s, uh, sergeants and staff sergeants that are out there with the soldiers are the backbone of the army, which may be true, but all they're really doing is relaying orders from Freemasons, <laughs> all right? And uh, you know, he this this user said something about uh, Eagle Scouts. And Eagle Scouts is the only type of fraternity that helps you uh, move up in the army. And I think he, he he misunderstood me. Okay, Eagle Scouts, you can go in as a private E2 instead of a private E1. It's a higher pay grade. It's like 40, 40 more dollars a month. Okay, you can. When I went into the army, I was an E1. That's the lowest you can go as far as rank. Okay, because I didn't have any you know credentials. I'm not an Eagle Scout. Nothing like that. But um, if you were an Eagle Scout, you can join the Army as an E2. Okay, that's the only um, benefit there is to being an Eagle Scout when it comes to the Army. Now, 
the reason why I'm sort of concerned about um, the Freemason shit being intertwined with the army is because we all know that um, some really evil men in, in our history were Freemasons, right? And um, if you try if you try to look up like your local Freemason lodge or whatever, like they they actually have websites for to um, for different chapters of Freemason lodges or whatever okay and which it's a secret society so i don't know why they got websites but anyways um they paint this picture of themselves as being good men who believe in a higher power and um all that but the freemasons that are higher in the ranks the 31st 32nd 33rd degree freemasons that are up there you know at the top of the pyramid all right, like they don't have good intentions for us, and like JFK said in his secret society speech, you know, he gave a speech on this shit, and he said that uh, you know, um, they're gonna they're gonna um push their agenda by ways of um infiltration instead of invasion, which is what they're already doing with you know, some of our, our, our shit we have on TV, they're programming us through whichever means they can, okay, and, and it, it's working on a lot of people, which is why there's a lot less people awake than asleep right now, okay, and, um, you know, they, um, they have a vision for this world, and, and, and Satan has gotten into their souls, and has led them to believe that they're like the gatekeepers of humanity and they got to eliminate all these people and carry out this big depopulation depopula depopulation operation in order to make our world a more manageable place okay and um you know over my dead body is some shit like that going to happen all right like as long as I'm alive if they you know if shit starts hitting the fan and they try to implement martial law and all that you better believe i got like a whole bunch of people behind me already and i'm behind all them too and strength in numbers like i've said before you know there's so many people in our world yet a tiny little group of people run our world and they're fucking it up and something needs to be done about them okay and i'm not saying go do what that guy in Norway did and go out and shoot people and kill people and shit. Nah. They want to wage a war against us. We can we can beat them psychologically before we beat them physically, all right? Um we're already fucking with them. You know, if they if anyone up there is has come across my videos, they're probably shitting their pants right now. They're like, "Oh fuck," you know. And there's a few other soldiers, American soldiers there's not that many. There's like a handful of them that have spoken out against the military and against the war in Afghanistan. You can find them on YouTube and find them on the internet. All right. There's a, there's a, there's a small group of us that have spoken out against this shit. Um, most soldiers, most veterans either don't know what's going on because they're not very observant and very insightful and they don't, they, they, they can't, they don't really figure out what's going on around them or they've just been brainwashed into believing that, the ways they were taught in the military are right and they're not especially the whole shitty attitude towards civilians okay like i've said before there's plenty of guys i was in the army with that would say oh fucking civilians fucking civilians okay those young kids are getting brainwashed into thinking that they're better than civilians because it's going to make their job a lot easy easier when it comes time for martial law all right and um not only that but the way the afghan Af the, the afghani people were treated by our soldiers when uh, I was over in Afghanistan for 16 months. It was sickening. Those people, a lot of the um, soldiers were encouraged by their leadership to treat the civilians like shit because, um, you know, they, they there's this mentality in the Army and the Marines especially that, you know, intimidation, you can control people with intimidation, all right? Like, I think, to me, Afghanistan was like a practice run for us for martial law here because we would go up into villages, people were minding their own fucking business, there ain't, there ain't no one, you know, I ain't getting, I'm a, I'm a pretty uh, observant person, alright, and I wasn't getting no vibes, you know, bad vibes, you know, there wasn't anything wrong going on in this village and, 
you know, our soldiers are throwing people around and butt stroking people, that means hitting someone with the butt of your weapon, with the with the uh, butt of your gun. All right. For no reason, because it was funny, giving them pork and telling them it was something else because they know that they're Muslim and they don't eat pork, and basically making a joke out of their religion. You know what I mean? Like. The United States Army, I can't speak on the Air Force or the Marines or the Navy because I wasn't in those branches, but from what I know about how um, how fluid the military runs, it's probably the same in those branches too, okay? The United States Army is ran by Freemasons, okay? All the people, all the top brass with rank in the Army are Freemasons, whether they'll admit to it or not. General Petraeus, he's a Freemason, all right? That's why he was in charge of Iraq and Afghanistan for a while, and... Uh, no, I don't think he was in charge of Afghanistan, but I overheard a couple of generals talking about uh, some Freemasonry shit when I was over there. I also overheard a general that I was doing personal security detail for. I over I overheard him, and I quote, um, let me think of his exact words. It was something along the lines of we need to get this we need to we need to start on this pipeline already so we can get the fuck out of here. He was on the phone with someone in, in Washington DC, all right? And he was pissed off um, cuz we had a bunch of we had like five or six guys killed that day and he slipped up. He slipped up. I was in the room and he even said he looked at me and he said specialist Bickle, you don't repeat anything you heard. But guess what? I'm not in the army anymore, okay? So I don't give a fuck, you know? He he basically said, you know, we need to we need, we need to secure what we need to secure for this fucking pipeline so we can get the fuck out of here because this place is a piece of shit and the people here are pieces of shit. That's what this three-star general said, all right? You know, you see generals on TV and they, they look all like they're, they're a certain type of person, you know, but I really can't think of anyone in the army that I met that was way up there in the ranks that I liked. I could see through pretty much all of them, okay? There was a couple, uh, let me think. There was a chaplain I met, which is the Army's version of a preacher or pastor or whatever. He was a, he was a two-star general. And that was probably the nicest, one of the nicest people I'd ever met in the Army. He was a really nice guy, you know what I mean? And other than him, you know, a lot of those people up there, um, just care about themselves, you know. They 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 came in knowing that once they get to the top, you know, um, their life will be good. Okay, generals have access to fucking airplanes and helicopters whenever they want. They get the biggest house on an army base, you know what I mean? And they they put up usually most of them have been in for 20, 30 years before they reach that status. But once they once they reach it, they've been so bad, badly brainwashed in the army isn't a job it's a lifestyle to them and it's just crazy man but i'm almost running out of time so i'm gonna go but yes freemasons run the army i don't care what anyone tells me i did four years of that shit 16 months in afghanistan i know it for a fact all right so with that being said hope everyone has a good night and i'll be back with another video either later or tomorrow all right peace out